Right there guys, how's it going? So, today I will be doing a podcast on depression, stress. No, depression, anxiety and stress. or anxiety, oh, Whatever order it's in, it doesn't matter. So, let's start off with the biggest issue, probably in my opinion. Um, depression. So, there's a lot of stuff that people might like be depressed about, you know, just anything really. Um... A lot of people might feel bad about the way their life's going, um, relationships failing, friends ditching them, family ditching them, not being accepted for who they are. Um, And I just feel like they're a little... Obviously, there isn't a combination of words that can fix all these things. You know, in reality, I feel like time's a big healer, you know. Time is the thing that will eventually help you get over it. Like, you just have to try and wait out the storm, you know, for things like that. But here's a few little things that might be able to help you, um, might be able to give you a fighting chance. And so, the first thing for me, well, not for me, I, I haven't suffered with any serious mental health issues. Uh, we all go through bad times and some have some dark days or feel down, but I haven't had what you call depression, because depression, you're just down, from what people have told me, you're just down all the time, and a good friend of mine said, real depression is when you come to two options, and those options are either kill yourself or get help, those are the two options with real depression, he told me, and um, sounds about right, really, to be honest, and there is a difference between feeling depressed and being de- and actually having depression, um, so yeah, a few things that can help you. Um, just sort of like surrounding yourself. This is one thing. Surrounding yourself with good people. Because obviously I know that there are some people who have the proper like seriously bad illness. Um, which can totally mess them up. The real depression. Uh, which just absolutely kills. And they could have, you know, an ama- a partner. A beautiful partner with an amazing body. They could have all the money in the world. They could be doing the career that they want, they could be having an exciting life, they could be famous, loads of money, everyone loves them, says they're the best thing since sliced bread, their parents are amazing, their um, brothers and sisters are cool, they still talk to them, Um, the rest of their family is cool, and they just have had an amazing life, but they're just just still depressed, you know, but there are some people, although because of their illness, they can't be as happy as a normal person, or someone who hasn't got as much as them, you know, because there's some celebrities who are really, uh, well, not celebrities, MMA fighters who I really look up to, and, uh, pardon me, and I think to myself half the time, man, I'm so happy for them, this is absolutely amazing what they're doing, they've worked so hard to earn what they've got, I want the best for them, even though I don't know them, um, you know, um, fighters from England, or the county that I live in, or even American fighters who I respect, you know, I want the best for them, and I feel like some some people I think fighters I think are just really cool, but some of them have got mental like mental illness like depression, and I just feel so bad because I think like they've worked so hard for this that they're able to do this amazing sport, and they're really good at it, and they've got all these people who love them. You know, one person who I'm a big fan of is actually a trainer um, for MMA, and you know. He's got a wife and a baby. All the people at his gym love him, you know. And from the outside, he's got a good life, you know. The gym he pays that loads of people go to. And he's such a good bloke. He's such a nice, respectful bloke. But he's got mental illness, you know. And I just feel so awful. He's worked so hard for all this stuff. And to get to level he's at, I'm not going to name names, obviously. But to get to level he's at, you have to work hard for this stuff. And he's he's had mental health. And it's just so sad. Um... You know, and he's got all the good stuff. You know, um, another fighter that has suffered with mental health. He's one of the best um, fighters ever. You know, his footwork's beyond belief. He can switch stances, doesn't throw many kicks, but he's brilliant. And even he's suffered with mental health. And you think, man, they've worked so hard for this. And half the, some of the time they can't be happy. Or some a lot of the time they can't be happy. Or if they're struggling without medication or whatever. You know what I mean? And it's just absolutely horrible, really. Um, But there are also... I know that was a bit of a ramble. But there are also people who, um, 
you know, sort of have added shit since day one. One, you know, their family aren't very nice. They've got a crap partner. Their friends are all dickheads and toxic. Uh, they haven't had many opportunities, and they're just down about their luck, really. But I suppose all you can really do is try and play with the cards you dealt. Because I don't mean to take this back to MMA fighting and boxing, but a lot of the best people, they, you know, not all of them, not all of them. Some of them have had middle class lives, um, upper working class lives and working class lives and poor lives and basically broke lives. And they've, they've still made it to the top, you know. But ones who've had nothing, who've had to claw mentally and physically, they managed to get to the top. And they haven't had like, anything to begin with, you know, and they've had all the shit hands dealt. So I suppose if they can do it, I guess sort of what's stopping other people from doing it. Obviously, I understand some people have mental or physical disabilities, which is a real shame. But a normal person, well, not a normal person, but like a healthy, physically healthy person who hasn't got any, you know, too many mental disabilities holding them back. You know, you'd think that they might be all right. I don't know. Um, but yeah. So if you're stuck with toxic people and horrible people in your life, maybe try and find a hobby. Um, you know, reading books, just go to the library, rent a book, read a book, uh, watch films. Maybe that can help you escape. Write stories, write songs, try and write a script. Uh, maybe try and write a book. I don't know, because the thing is, although there's a good chance that you won't succeed, there's a chance that you can make quite a bit of money. Maybe do things in your off time, like, I don't know, maybe try and make some films for a laugh. Hang around, try and go to social clubs, maybe, and um, find, you know, better people. Because at the end of the day, even if you can have a toxic squad, you know, um, you can still, there's still a small or a decent chance that you can meet good people at, like, I don't know, college, university. Um, maybe you do a job where you, you know, at, at work. You might meet some nice friends. You'd have to be incredibly unlucky to have shit people at work, shit people at college, uni that you've met, shit people in secondary school, a shit squad that you hang around with regularly, shit family, shit partner, shit cousins, whatever, you know what I mean? You'd have to be extremely unlucky. I don't know, as I say, maybe try and do some martial arts as well or some sort of sport. You can meet good people there. Um, and the thing is with a martial art or any sport, you know, you can potentially become really successful you know football players they're on like some of them in the top leagues are on like thirty five thousand pounds a week which is mad i know a lot of them are on a considerably higher amount you know um but yeah um so all that really those are things that you can do obviously talk to someone get therapy get help um yeah you know hobbies and all that really there's another decent point i was gonna make but honestly oh, i just can't remember i'm so sorry um, but yeah, I'll sort of, you know, maybe talk about a personal experience. I guess the only time I felt a bit down, uh, for a bit of time, I had this knuckle injury cause I used to do Thai boxing loads and loads and loads. And that sort of became the norm for me. It really helped me a lot. It got me some respect in school. Um, I didn't have much respect before that, but as soon as I started Thai boxing, I got some respect, uh, on my name. I know how to defend myself in a bad situation. Um, if someone's getting beaten up, I can. I know anyone can have a knife on them, but I mean, if I saw someone getting beaten up, you know, I'd be able to help them because I know how to defend myself. I'd hope I'd, I'd be able to help them. Obviously, if if I don't know Eddie Hall is beating up some scrawny person, some scrawny small person, I'd like to think I'd try and run at him and try and help the person who's getting beaten up. But there's not much you can do. Like Eddie Hawke can basically just kill someone with his hand or both his hands. It's um there isn't much I can do, but I'd like to think that I'd try and help, I guess, because I've got this ability to fight. Even though my knuckle injury means that I haven't been able to train properly at my full potential for quite a few years. I've still done some bits and bobs, I still use my left and my kicks, my knees and elbows. I did that for quite a few years. I don't I haven't been able to do it as much recently. I've been focusing on um grappling quite a bit. Not like recent times, but like you know, like, not like the past few weeks, but like, obviously before that, because I've had a bit of a minor injury. Um, well, not injury, but like, I've had a few back pains, sadly. And, um, yeah, but my knuckle, it just has, has never got better. And losing, because originally, after that session, 
because my knuckle hurt so much. It was pads for most of the session, then a bit of sparring at the end, and I just used my left. The skeezer said, man, because it was a um, bit of light head sparring, obviously, but then some hard sparring to the body afterwards. And he said, man, your jab's fucking hard, man. And I was like, oh, cheers, because I, I couldn't use my right hand this time. So I just relied so heavily on my jab. And, um, but yeah. And I said to the person at the end of the session, I said, I'll see you in two weeks. And three years later, I still haven't gone back, sadly. Um, but there are certain things that came out of it. I'm not going to go into them because they're personal, but there's quite a few things in my life that have changed because I haven't done Thai boxing that have turned out for the better, really. Um, I've got more egg. Oh, this is just something that isn't really personal. But um, oh, it's personal in a positive way, but I just don't want to go into it. Um, but I'll say one thing that isn't too personal. Um, I've got into films a lot. Uh, TV shows a lot more in there, a lot of fun. Um, I've been even though I was interested in combat before, I've been watching that a lot more, and um, yeah, just going out and enjoying myself a lot more. Really, as I haven't been relying on Thai boxing too much anymore. But it's an identity th identity thing because you're so good at something, and then you lose that, lose you know, lose your ability to do it to your full potential. You're sort of like, man, how good is that? You know, it's so sad. But um, a bit of advice for depression. Do not, I repeat, it's fine to sulk. It's fine to be angry. It's fine to cry. It's fine to think that it's not fair. Even though, I mean, I'm not a crier, but I have, I have felt down about not being able to do tar boxing again. But it's just not me. I'm not, try oh, I'm, I'm not trying to say, oh, I'm a hard man. I'm a hard man. I don't cry. It's just not me. Um, there has been some films that I've watched which have nearly made me cry. And I did cry, like, bloody hell, like, five six years ago a couple films and uh, one tv show and a film like proper cry because it was just absolutely beautiful um but yeah the thing is it's fine to be down but just don't be jealous of people because it just makes you feel so like annoyed and just there's just no point like when i was a little kid i was jealous of people but i just thought as i got older i thought man this isn't a good feeling at all and when i was a young teenager i was a bit jealous of people but but around like 15, 16 years old, I stopped being jealous because I just thought, I've got a nice family, decent people around me, you know, do what I enjoy doing, life's good in it. So don't be too upset, things could be a million times worse. Well, not upset, but like, because when I was younger, I sort of felt like, I don't know, as much as Thai boxing was fun and I was good at that, I felt like I just wasn't going to achieve anything, Um, you know. But at the end of the day, you can't really ponder on things, you know, you have to. I know that's a bit of a personal thing that I just said, but still. We all have, like, inner things and inner worries, obviously. And inner demons and things. And, um, yeah, you know. To be honest, as I say, just don't be jealous of people. Because the thing is, life is too short to be annoyed about what other people have got. And the thing is, what really pisses me off. A lot of the people I was, like, jealous of was either people being real dickheads about shit or people who weren't very nice. Um, but the people who I was really, like, who, what I don't understand, and I've seen a lot of examples of this um, in everyday life and stories that I've heard of people, and um, people just being jealous of their own family and their own friends. You know, it's fine when you're a kid, I guess, but, like, when you're a fully grown human being, when you're over 20, unless your family is an absolute, unless your family members are absolute dickheads, why on earth would you be jealous of them? Like, they're your family. You want to, because, because, like, the thing is, I'll give an example. I told, I know you shouldn't gloat about this, but I, I just, at the time, I was just felt so amazing about it. But passing my driving test, I said, I messaged people saying, yes, I passed, blah, blah, whatever. Just good friends. I didn't put it all over Facebook. I just sent it to good friends. I passed. Well, hey. Then the majority of people were saying, how many minors? And I'm like, man. I was like, eight. Like, oh, okay. I'm thinking, bloody hell. Why do you even care about how many minors? Can't you just be happy for people? Like, honestly, it's just absolutely unbelievable. You know, can't they just be like fair play instead of trying to compete and be like, I understand competing in like sports, but like competing in something as minuscule as like passing a driving test. It's like every single person 
who has said that to me, I've said congrats, fair play, congrats. How did your previous tests go? What did you learn from them? Not to be like, oh, you failed before, ha, no, but like, just out of interest, just out of convers- just for conversation's sake, you know. That's the main reason I ask those sort of questions. But I, I don't instantly just say, how many minors? You know, it's just like, eh, I don't know. Not everyone's like that, but quite a few people was like that, you know. But it doesn't mean that they're jealous or bad, but it just means like, why why shit got to be a competition, you know? But, um, yeah. And another thing with being jealous of people, it's sort of, I just feel that, if it's someone that you don't like or you're annoyed at, how is being jealous of them, being envious of what they've got, going to make your life any better or worse? Or, or would you would you be happier if like their life's going horrible? I don't see how, if they was having bad stuff happening to them or good stuff happening to them, I don't see how that would make your life any better or worse, whatever your situation is. You know, I mean, if you're happy and then you're being jealous of people, then just try and focus on the happy stuff, the positive things. You're feeling negative and you're feeling jealous of people. I don't see how, like, them having something bad happen to them will make your life better. And it baffles me, as I said before, it baffles me even more when people are jealous of their own family. And so you'd rather, like, have people who... Like, so you'd rather have your family doing bad when your life's going bad. Or wouldn't you, like, feel happy for people that you like or people that you're happy for? Like, or people, you know, people that you respect. Wouldn't you feel happy for them that they're doing well? Wouldn't you think, well, my life could be better, but you know what? They're doing well, and that makes me happy. I don't see how other people's negativity makes negative people feel better. It just doesn't make sense to me, maybe. I don't know. I just don't know, really. It's it's just it's just bizarre to me. Um... When I was saying about surrounding people though early, like people that you're surrounded with and then like friends and what have you. Um, one thing to note, now I know some squads or friend groups or whatever, there's got to be somewhere everyone's just tight with each other and everyone's cool. But in a lot of squads, um, well a lot of friend groups, you've got to realise that most people, as much as they might seem like good friends or alright friends, they're not really that bothered. You know, obviously be cool with them, staying around with them, but like, there ain't, you won't get many true friends who genuinely care about you in life. You know, you'll get some good friends who are like a bit bothered, but you won't get people who are really, really, really bothered about you and really want to, want what's best for you and want, you know, and have your back. And um, that's just the way it is, really. You know, so my point with that is don't become too attached to people. As I say, social groups, going to the gym. Like, I mean social clubs, sorry. Going to the gym. Um, what's it called? Um, martial arts or like a sport or something. Or like, I don't know, a, lang- a club where you go and learn languages. Or like a cooking club, I don't know. Just a place that you can socialise and make friends with people. I just, I don't know. Um, but yeah, you know, you can make some friends there. So what I'm saying is like, don't rely on one friend group. Try and make multiple friend groups, you know. Um, um, so, yeah, maybe make some friends over the internet. That could help you a bit. I don't know. To be fair, I feel like social media and Xbox and PS4, and P- especially PC, bloody hell, a lot of toxic stuff goes on there. And um, the thing is, you get a lot of miserable people on there from what I've gathered. A lot of people who don't really have that much, who just but who just bullshit and act like they've got everything and act like everything's perfect. And I'm thinking, all right, fair enough. If you have got everything, fair play. But like, first off, why do you need to rub it in? If you're truly satisfied with all the stuff you've got, why do you need to rub it in? So it's clear that it's lies and nonsense. Because I've met a few people on Xbox who are just total, total, utter bullshit artists. Like, they're just absolute, they talk absolute bollocks all the time. It's unreal. The thing is, I'm fine with white lies or whatever. If you really want a white lie to make your life sound a bit better, yeah, do what you want in it. Do what you want. I, I sort of get it, like why people white lie, because certain things you are going to get taken the piss out for. If you're brutally honest or totally honest with absolutely everyone about all the things that have happened in your life, you're probably going to get torn a million pe- into a million pieces. You know, I hate it when people are like, I have nothing to hide. I have- you do have shit to hide. Like, come on, you know. But, like, maybe don't 
don't build yourself up to be the best thing ever. Just build yourself up to be like average if it's lies. Obviously, if you've earned something. I mean, even if it's true, people like saying it's bullshit. Like, I've said to people about things that I've done, you know, good positive things, and they're, like, they're either like, oh, it's bollocks, or they've just made stuff up and said that it's not true. Which is fine, I guess. It's whatever, really, people can... It doesn't really bother me, but then you can tell who liars are, because if you say to them, mate, what's your problem, and that it's a load of lies and rubbish, they get so angry and so defensive. If it's true, you don't need to get angry. You really don't, you know. Um, so, yeah. As I say, but the thing is, even if bad people do have everything, if all those people who lied, even though, you know, I've had evidence that these people lied and it's whatever, um, or I'm, a lot of people who I was hanging around on Xbox were very sure that that person was lying. Even if everything that they said was somehow true, you know what, I'd be thinking fair play. Even ones that I don't like, I'd be like, well, you've worked hard, you've earned it, even if you're a dickhead about it. Well done, well done, seriously, well done, mate. <laughs> nice one. Fair play. Um... So, yeah, the basic thing that I'm trying to get across with depression. Um, obviously, get help, eat the right food, surround yourself with decent people. And if you if you either feel depressed or you have got depression, if you have got depression, those things alone might not help that much, but they could steer you into an okay direction. But if you just feel down and you feel really down, getting good people in your life, you know, um, that will really, really help you. Um, so yeah, another thing about depression though, there, there are certain people who like use it to manipulate people or like make people feel sorry for them or like, oh, I'm depressed. I'm justifying my actions. I'm depressed. You know, and it's like, come on, bro. Seriously. Uh, people who I know with real depression do not go on about it 24 seven. And you can tell people with depression because people with real depression, they don't talk about it and actually can admit, shit, this person's got a worse life than I have. There are some people who say they're depressed and they say, oh, this person's had it easy. And I'm like, no, they haven't, they haven't. They've had a very hard life. No, they've had it easy. My life's the hardest life in the world. And it's like, mate, you have no idea what the hell you're talking about. And the thing is, if, you really, if you've got too much of a massive ego and you can't admit that other people have had a worse life, at least say, oh, man, what they've been through is absolutely horrible. And then don't go on about, like, who's had it worse if you're that insecure about yourself. Because um, the thing is, if you truly had it bad, you don't really need to go on about it all the time. Like, if your beliefs are that weak that you have to go on about something 24-7, it's like, mate, just grow up, seriously. Um, but yeah, I know some people who've had absolutely horrible lives and their mental health is, like, normal. And I know some people who've had... Who've had a... Usually, people with real depression, from what I've gathered, or borderline depression, have actually had some bad lives. Like, one of my mates told me he's had real bad issues... He told me, um, usually the bad things that happen make it worse because you feel negative about it and it ponders on your mind. You know, usually people who've got nothing to be down about, even if they are down, it isn't as bad for them. He told me, and he's got real issues, you know. Um, I'm sure some people will say, oh, that's a load of bollocks, but seriously, it isn't, you know. The friend who told me, I trust him a lot. Because I hate, you know, when you t tell someone something and, like, you say, this is what this person said to me, I'm just saying it to you, what do you think? And they, like, start saying, oh, well, that's a load of bollocks. And it's like, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just saying what someone who's been through shit or who told me this shit is saying, you know. I know it's a bit of a weird thing to go on a tangent about, but there are some weird people, man. There are some really weird people out there. Um. So... The way you can tell if people really have it. And usually, I'm not trying to be a horrible, horrible, horrible person. But, actually, no, 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 forget it. I was going to go into a point about, like, people, how you can tell who's attention-seeking and who isn't. But it's like, you don't know what's going on inside their head, even if they haven't got real depression. Because, uh, I'm not going to go into it, but, like, someone did say to me once... People who cut themselves, or, oh, oh, okay, I'll just say it anyway. People who cut themselves, or end up trying to end their life, they have got serious issues, but if they really wanted to end it, they would have ended it, you know. And obviously, I don't want them to end it, and it's probably best that they get that cry for help, and people are like, shit, they try to kill themselves, let's help them, help them. But I'm just saying, people who are really, really down in the shitter, if they want to end it, they do end it. 
Because obviously people who are cr doing the cry for help or whatever, um, you know, you can tell that they've got some some problems. Because my mate did say to me that you know they've got some issues, but not, but not like serious. Uh, pardon me, serious depression. And some people might just do mad stuff anyway, and they might it might not even be a cry for help. They might just feel like they need to do that mad thing. I don't know. Um, I'm sorry if I offended anyone bringing up that point, but it's just what I've been told and what I've gathered. Really, the only reason I'm a bit harsh on like people who, not people who like try and end their lives or whatever, and don't don't you know succeed, don't not not succeed in doing so. Sorry, and don't actually end them. They do need help still, but. The point was, like, people who really, really want to end it and have had enough, end it if they can. It seems like, anyway. Um, there are some situations, obviously, people are taking loads of pills and then they don't... They take so many pills that they might get knocked out, but they haven't um, taken enough. So I suppose in those situations, yes, but, like, if someone's running off and saying, oh, I'm going to jump, I'm going to jump, and they don't just jump straight away. They're probably sort of just asking for attention and crying for help. But they probably, there's a good chance that they do need that help, you know. So I'm not belittling anyone or anything, you know. They That person could have had a horrible life. Those people could have had horrible lives, you know. Um, or there, something bad must be going on. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I feel like even if you are depressed... Don't use that as an excuse to, like, hit people. That's the worst of all. Like, emotional manipulation. I do feel like that is bad. But what's worse is physical hitting someone and saying, oh, it was my... Uh, it's it's my, my mental health. It's my mental health. Blah, 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 blah. And it's like, usually people who are really, really, really depressed do not go about hitting people. They don't have the energy to. They just don't want to do anything all the time. They're just down. So for people to sit there saying, oh, it's my, it's my mental health, blah, blah, blah. It's just madness. Um, but yeah, people who like um, run off as well. Sometimes there is a problem there. But if you're really depressed on that day, you probably don't want to do anything. So people who run off, there is a problem there. There is, there is a problem. It depends if they come back or not on what they're doing. Uh, or maybe some people just want to be left alone. Maybe they just feel like, oh, I just want to be left alone and not do anything today. And they might go off somewhere and not tell anyone. So that's fair enough, I guess. But, like, if you're running off and, like, sort of, sort of telling people, if you want people to find you and, like, do stuff, you know, and be like, oh, what's going on, what's going on? It's sort of like, I don't know. There is a problem there, but it seems quite attention... Not attention-seeking, but like... I don't know, I don't even know the point I'm trying to make. It's just... Some people are doing stuff for attention and still put energy into them, but like, people with... The problem is, if you put energy into like everyone's story and what everyone's saying, you know, unless they... Unless there's like some... Unless you know that they're going, that something bad's happening, there ain't there ain't much point in putting loads and loads of energy because you need to be saving the energy for people you know who have real issues and real bad issues. Because otherwise, you're just going to say the same generic shit and just be worn out and think, oh, everyone's just faking all this nonsense, you know. So, uh, yeah, one last point I want to bring up though, with um depression diagnosis. You can basically go to the doctors and just say, I f I'm only seeing dark thoughts, I'm so depressed, so down, and get put on medication. Now, I'm sure the people who do get put on medication have, like, issues, but I don't know. I feel like if you just say all this sad stuff to the doctor, it is sort of true, but it just depends on the situation and the person, really. It's it's too There's too much detail to, like, break down absolutely everything, you know. But I'm just saying how easy it is for people to get medication. It's unreal. But then you see people who have it so bad that they have to go in, like, um, home, not like, um, mental institutions, you know, for people with these issues. And it's just such a shame, really. And I feel like they're the ones who have it worse. So I'm not saying that other people, I'm not saying that you have to go to some mental institution to have issues. But, you know, um, I feel like they've definitely got it the worst. People are in these uh, mental rehabilitation places. Um,. But yeah, I know that was sort of me going on a rant, but I just want people to realise that, 
you know, you have to put the most energy into people with real problems, you know, and who you can tell have real issues. I feel like people who just post stuff on social media about feeling down, I don't mind it sometimes, but, like, if they're doing it all the time, is it really that bad? Like, if you want everyone to know these problems, do these problems really affect you that badly? Or do you just want loads of attention off people? Because the thing is, attention, it might make you feel all right in the short term, but in the long term, it isn't going to help you. Because you're just going to be fed the same stuff. Oh, you've had a hard life. Oh, it's bad for you. Oh, it's bad for you. You know, it isn't going to help you in the long term. What helps you in the long term, as I say, surrounding yourself with good people, therapy, and um, exercise and eating good. Now, I'm not saying you have to go mad and just eat salads all the time. But I don't know. Have some salmon sometimes. Mix it up. Have salmon. Some red meat sometimes. Uh, chicken. Um, you know, cod. Um... Um, what's it called? I can't remember what the other fish I was going to say. Oh, yeah, cod or whatever. Cod as well. Um, a lamb, mutton, I don't know. I know those are all just meats, but like maybe have carrots, peas, sweet corn, rice, mushrooms. Um, maybe have some like cucumbers and lettuce sometimes. I don't know. Maybe have some fruit drinks. Just mix it up, you know. Don't just be eating junk all the time and don't eat. Maybe, if you're a regular fast food person, try and get the healthiest thing. Not the absolute healthiest, but like one of the more healthier things on the menu rather than eating crap. Because I just feel like your system feels better when you eat better food. Like, obviously, treat yourself sometimes, but don't don't go mad, you know. And as I say, exercise is quite important. I know some people are probably like, oh, you're just saying exercise solves everything. No, but it's a piece to the puzzle to helping you. I'm not saying it will fix all your problems, but I'm just saying it will help you a bit. It takes your mind off things and it creates endorphins. A lot of people, even people who just feel down, say exercise helps them. And I know not. I know some people might have physical problems and they might not be able to exercise, but maybe people with minor physical problems can do like lighter weights. I don't know. Or uh, going on walks as well helps. Meditation, uh, reading a book, um, keeping yourself occupied, and that sort of stuff. So yeah. Um. That's it, really, for the depression part. Now on to anxiety. This will probably be a bit shorter. I feel like a lot of people can actually have anxiety because you can just get really, really worried about something. And as I say, don't use it just to be a dickhead to people, but um, just be brutally honest about it. Like, listen, you know, because I feel like with depression, not everyone's on the spectrum. Quite a few people are. But I feel like with ang well not loads of people, but like you do feel down, but like, you know, there's levels to it. With anxiety, I feel like everyone's on the spectrum because everyone feels really, really nervous sometimes. Everyone sweats sometimes. Everyone has fears sometimes, you know. And there are some people who are just like majorly confident. And there are also people who aren't that confident. But I su but I suppose it's the things that happen, whether they're positive or negative, that affect you in that way. So I suppose if you've been bullied your whole life you're sort of going to have some trust issues and be a bit nervous around people. And if you've had a horrible family, you know, maybe you are going to be a bit nervous. Or maybe it'll make you really ballsy because you've been through so much shit. Then when you get into the normal world, you might be, like, really confident because you're like, I've seen the dark side of life. I've seen bad things happen regularly. You know, I know what this is about. So, I don't know. It can work both ways, really. Uh, with anxiety, though... um, Obviously, there's people who are, like, quiet at first, and when you get to know them, they talk loads, um, and they're just really, really chatty. Obviously, there's some people who are just nervous in certain situations, who don't like going to places on their own, don't like walking around at night. Maybe it's because of, like, a bad experience they had being on their own. I don't know. <clears throat> I mean, personally, just from my perspective, um... I was quite anxious for years because I did get bullied a lot in primary school. And I got bullied a bit in secondary school. I did I did stand up for myself towards the end of primary school. And after about a year in secondary school, it, the bullying wasn't too bad. But I did stand up for myself. And I gained some respect, as I say, with the martial arts and all that. I should have just stood up for myself at first. But, like, I didn't really have an opportunity to. Like, I picked the right time and the right place to um, stand up for myself, you know. But, um... Yeah, and then after that, I was sort of just more ballsy, really. I don't like going around looking for fights or anything. Um, but if I need to defend myself, I will. You know, like if someone came and wanted to rob me, I'd just hand over my wallet. It's not worth it. They could have a knife. But if I hand over my wallet and then they've got a knife out and they're going to just kill me anyway, then obviously I'm going to fight and try and break their face and just beat the shit out of them. Um, you know, 
So um, I understand that not everyone can fight. Or, well, the average person can't fight, can they? I don't know what they're doing combat-wise, but I feel like if more people learn combat, they'd be more confident about themselves. They wouldn't feel as nervous. And um, they'd just feel more relaxed in bad situations because knowing that you can beat the shit out of someone is like, I don't know, it's just like sort of, it puts your confidence up a bit, but knowing that you can't beat up someone, you might feel like a bit insecure in certain situations, you know. Um, and also with martial arts, I think it's helped me a bit because I sort of don't care. But like for years, I didn't actually care what people thought because, uh, uh, you know, martial arts helped me care less, but I still cared for years and years and years because you said, I don't give a fuck. I, oh, sorry, I don't mean to swear, but uh, who cares? I swear in this moment. Because um, I don't like swearing too much on YouTube because in case, I don't know, my family don't know my channel, but in case anyone in my family watches it, you know, see me swearing all the time, it ain't really a good look really. Uh, but yeah, I just say it now, I was like, I don't give a fuck, I don't give a fuck what people think, fuck them, I don't care, I don't care what anyone thinks, I don't give a fuck. But then, after years and years and years, I realised, I just usually say, I'm not bothered, or uh, it's whatever, it's their opinion, or oh, I don't really care. Those are the sort of responses that you can tell. Because genuinely, when I was giving those more relaxed responses, it showed that I didn't care. But because I was getting angry, I was like, yeah, I don't care. I wanted people to think that I didn't care what anyone else thought. So they wouldn't keep thinking that I cared. So they wouldn't keep, like, keep talking. I don't know, not talking crap, but like, you know, criticising me over little things. But like now... Obviously, if someone says something that's absolute bullshit, I will say, well, that's bollocks because this, 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 and this. But if someone's just saying something like, oh, he's a dickhead, oh, he's an idiot, I'm not really bothered. I'm just like, eh, whatever. Um, obviously, if it's your family or someone you're close to, a good friend or whatever, or a partner or a, um, a colleague, a really good colleague or someone whose opinion you val val you know, is valuable to you, a valuable opinion, it's like... You do think, oh shit, someone I care about thinks bad about me. What can I do to improve? And if it's constructive, great. You can work on things, you know. But if it's not, then uh, you sort of just shouldn't care, should you? Um, But yeah, I just don't really care what people think anymore. Sometimes I might have a rant if someone says something that's absolute bullshit. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. People can think what they want. I'd, I'd imagine that... Well, <clears throat> After this podcast, if for some reason it gets some views, people might be commenting saying, oh, you're wrong on this, you're wrong on this. Fair dues, that's your opinion, mate, whatever. I mean, I do prefer constructive criticism just to people saying, oh, you're an idiot. But, uh, you know, it is what it is, isn't it? So how to um, conquer, well, not conquer, but sort of get over anxiety. I'll give a bit of a personal story. Um, an elderly family member of mine when she was young, Years ago, she just basically didn't talk that much at all. She was a ridiculously quiet person. Then as soon as she started working, she had to give like tour guides to people. And um, she had to deal with people in offices and um, uh, do interviews with people around this big glass glassworks place. Uh, pardon me. And because she was talking and dealing with people all the time, she basically became like one of the coolest people in the local town. Everyone knew who she was. It was like, all right, hello, all right. And because of working that job, talking to so many people, she, like, wasn't that quiet anymore. She she could talk to anyone easily. You know, it's insane, isn't it, really? So I feel like things that happen can shape you. Obviously, vice versa. There can be someone who's really talkative, and as soon as something awful happens, they, they don't talk that much anymore, um, which can be understandable if something horrible happens, you know? So, yeah. Um, it's usually the things that happen that shape you, you know. Um, but yeah, maybe the thing is, I'm not saying jump into some job that you're not ready for. Like, I'm not saying my elderly family member wasn't ready for it when she was young, but don't jump into some job where you're talking all the time. Just take, like, baby steps, like, I don't know, a social club, going to the gym. I know this isn't saying for depression, but this is sort of the social aspect. Um, I know I mentioned Xbox earlier, and there's a lot of bullshitters on there, and PS4 and PC. Even though I don't play games much anymore... Uh, maybe try and talk to people over the internet as a bit of a confidence booster, chat with them. Um, and then, you know, just build it from there, really. Try and gain some interests. Because like, one of my mates, um, he's been on the podcast before, he knows basically everything about everything, so he can talk to 
anyone about pretty much anything. Not everything. He's not really down with like modern stuff, but he can talk to people. He's bound to have a common interest with the majority of people that he talks to, practically. So, I don't know, maybe gain a load of interests uh, so you can talk to people about them. Uh, I don't know, maybe just try and make people laugh and tell jokes and have joking stories, maybe. Have some friendly banter with people, I don't know. As I say, just baby steps with becoming more of a confident person. Uh, but, you know, if you've got serious anxiety, then I know it's really, really going to be really hard for you to conquer. Sometimes I feel really nervous about stuff. You know, I think I used to have anxiety when I was a kid, as I say, because it was just... Honestly, I was heaving, like... No, no, no bullshit. I was honestly heaving four times before school, all the way up till about, like, middle of year 10. And the thing is, as I say, I stood up for myself in year 8, and I got some respect. But even then, I was still anxious about stuff. I don't know why. I don't know, maybe because of all the years of bullying and being paranoid beforehand. But, um, yeah, you know... It's um it's a bit hard really, but ever since like then, you know, I was more chilled out, like mid midway through year ten. And then in college, um I sort of learnt to type banter in my first year of college a lot better. Beforehand I didn't really type banter too well. I don't know if it was an ego thing. Um I don't know if it was like an just me getting aggro over nothing, I don't know, or not being able to take a joke, but for some reason I was just able to type banter. I feel like throughout the years, you just grow up. Some people just don't grow up. Some people don't want to grow up or just want to live in... Just, just want to be deluded. Some people care too much about what other people think, you know. Um, It's like um, at the pub the other day. <laughs> it's a weird story, but like I needed the toilet. And there was a load of people, loads and loads of people in the toilet. Like loads and loads of people and there was no room. So I just thought, oh, forget it. The toilet was really small. I can't piss with loads and loads of people around. And my 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 friend, um, I like he'd had a few. You know, he's a or he's a, yeah, I've known him for years, so he's a pretty decent mate. But he was like, "Oh, you're being a pussy, man. You're being a pussy." And I'm like, "No, I just can't piss with loads of people around, and there's too many people, and the toilets are small." And instead of and the weird thing was, I didn't even ask him to come with me. He just followed me, and then as soon as I went back in. He followed me back in. But obviously, I don't care. But I was a bit, like, confused. So you're saying, oh, don't be a pussy. But, like, you're following me back in. So who's more of a coward? The coward or the coward who follows him? You know, it's like, I don't know. Again, he didn't really bother me too much. We'd all had a few drinks. He probably desperately needed the toilet and might have wanted me to go with him. But I didn't want anyone to go with me. I just thought, oh, there's no room at the moment. Might as well go back. But the thing is, if I had cared... What he thought, a little minor thing like that, oh, oh, stop being a pussy or whatever. If I cared about that, I might have, you know, gone in, gone to the, like, gone in and done what he said, gone to the toilet and not been able to piss, then go all the way back out and then wait for a bit, then go all the way back in again and not been able to piss and just been struggling and straining. I know it's a weird thing to think, but, like, I'm just not bothered what people think, you know. Um, like, you know. It's just, you just got to chill out a bit and not be bothered what other people say about you. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Some dude um, said, you know, that um, I'm selfish even though I help loads of people with this um, thing in college. One, Well, a teacher actually said, don't be selfish, guys. I, I, I'm not going to go into it. Like, I was quite annoyed at first, but then I thought, the thing is, the facts are the facts. I've done my best to help people. It doesn't really matter what one person thinks, as long as more people know the truth, you know. So it's like, you've just got to sort of, as I say, so a lot of people, their opinions don't matter. Just care about the people that are close to you. Care about their opinions. That's all I can say, really. Um, but yeah, with anxiety, it's baby steps. Go out and do things and just do your best, really. You know, uh, you, as long as you're in a better position than you were before, you know, don't put pressure on yourself to be the master at talking to everyone. Just try and get yourself in a bit of a better position, you know. So, yeah, now on to the final bit, stress. Um, I'll talk about a few times I was stressed. All right, then. So, mental stress. I've had some physical stress as well, uh, but mental stress. So, I was quite stressed out in my first year of college because I didn't realise how long it would take to get back on these coaches. And obviously, people like get the bus, but the college provides you these coaches and if they didn't provide us with the coaches, we'd have to. They'd have to give everyone a bus pass. So there's literally zero point in taking the bus. 
But um, even though it would have been quicker, but it would be wasting loads and loads of money. And I could have got a bus pass, but I really didn't have the money back then. So, I was out of the house from 25 to 8, all the way up to half 6 at night, usually, or 20 past 6 on my first year. Uh. Or quarter past 6 on the first year, because the coaches were so bad. And the thing is, I'd have to wait outside in the blistering cold for ages. It was absolutely horrible, because they'd be late. And I know you could say... Oh, well, you can just predict the coaches when they're late, but you can't because sometimes they get there early, then you've missed your lessons and all that shit. And I always had to redo maths and English, so I was there. Oh, first off, I was there the longest, you know. What? How long were these days? I know it's a bit like, oh, you know, there's no point in working out the days, but like eight till six, ten hours, then half and 25 minutes. So like nearly 11 hours every day. Um, you know, usually, or a bit less, or a bit more. I mean, once, I was out of the house from, like, court, uh, 25 to 8, all the way up to, like, 7. No, no, sorry, I got back at the bus stop around, like, 10 to 7, or 7, and then, obviously, it took me, like, bloody 8 minutes to walk home, I guess. So, you know, and things I was doing this, like, I was getting back at 6, 4, no, I was doing the long days, three days a week, and the one day I'll be out of the house from 12 till uh, half six, which wasn't too bad, which was actually really nice, um, you know. So, yeah, it could have been a lot, lot, lot worse, you know, way worse. Um, but for ages, I was complaining and complaining and complaining. Like, I was like, oh, you know, it's so hard these days. The thing is, a lot of people weren't understanding who I was complaining to. Like, obviously now, looking back on it, it was a bit ridiculous. But at the time, like, that I was complaining a lot. But at the time, people was like, oh, it ain't that hard, it ain't that hard. Oh, I had to do this, me, 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 I had to me, 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 me. And it's like, okay, then, all I'm saying is that it's quite hard, you know. It really, it really ain't easy. And the thing is, I didn't have a part-time job at the time. Doing maths and English again, I just felt like, oh, I'm not going to pass it. And I thought, this level two qualification, what a load of silliness, honestly. It's like, uh And I just thought to myself, all right then, just graft at maths and English, see how hard you can work. Just just play just play a game with yourself, work ridiculously hard, and see if you still fail. If you still fail, then it is whatever, really. But if you pass, that's amazing. Just work hard. And to be honest, I put a lot of effort into English, a lot of effort, but I basically just didn't put much effort into maths at all, really. Um... You know, I thought English is the one I need to get on the course next year, so I'm just going to graft like mad. And uh, in the end, I actually managed to pass both of them, and I was surprised. I thought I wasn't going to pass either of them, because I just thought, no, my luck, I'm just not going to get there. I know that's a bad attitude to have, but I just felt like, with academic stuff, I just felt like my luck just isn't good, and I'm just not good enough. But yeah, I managed to pass it. Um, got on merit at the end of my um, media course after the two years of level three. It was a bit annoying though. I was getting stre- a bit stressed at the end of that as well because so many people weren't showing up and were being given so much extra time to hand stuff in. Then I was handing stuff in on time, and you know, so it gives them an advantage really because they're just being lazy and not doing it on time. It's just, it's just not fair really at all to be honest. They're like, oh, I haven't completed it yet. I can't hand it in. Then they're just giving like extra, an extra month. It's absolutely ridiculous and not showing up half the time. You know, it's just sadness. I know some people could have personal things happening, which I respect that and I understand that. But, you know, if quite a few people are allowed to hand the work in longer, then why not everyone be able to have extra time on their work? You know, it's just it's just absolute silliness. But um, that's all in the past, really. Can't be getting annoyed. It's not really the people's fault for having time off because some of them, two of them, well, I say one or two of them had genuine reasons of the people who had time off that weren't having genuine reasons. I don't know, maybe none of them were having genuine reasons. All, all of them were. I don't know what was going on in their lives. But the thing is, I've heard that a lot of stories about universities as well. A lot of people just, like, don't show up. And the first year's the easiest year. The first year's 20 times easier than college, apparently. And the second year's about the same. And the third year's quite hard. But, yeah, um, what I learned from that is that try not to get too wound up about lazy people or people not showing up. Because at the end of the day, in the working world, they'll probably get the sack if they don't work to a decent standard i know there's some people who do bare minimum but still just try and be a hard worker and do your best to be honest with you um yeah so oh yeah how to counteract stress obviously oh i've been a buffoon i've just gone on about myself for like a few minutes so what you want to do 
is um if your job's too hard, maybe try and find a different job. I know some some like you might be in a situation where you're like, oh, I love the money, but at the end of the day, if it's affecting you really badly, get a different job. Um, if you're stressed about your financial situation, maybe try and work more hours or find a bit of a hard job which doesn't require too many qualifications, or maybe sell stuff on Amazon or eBay. Uh, invest if you're stressed about financial situations. I mean, if you're stressed about the people around you, uh, find try and find new people, I guess. I don't know, to be honest. Um, yeah. You know, there isn't really much else I can say, really. I just went on about myself for like, like a buffoon for like 10 minutes. And there isn't really much I can say about stress, really. I just thought I'd compare my stressful situations to see what other people would think. I don't know, to... To maybe help people realise, oh, you're not alone. We've all felt stress before. I don't know. I feel like when you get older, you oh yeah, physical stress. Um, when I was working in this warehouse, I was basically given like the most physically res physically demanding jobs because a lot of people would just be packing away for wards and departments, and a lot of the stuff in their cages were quite light. But I was walk, and they might only have to walk to a few locations, like. One day they might only have to walk to two locations, but obviously they have a few cages for those locations, but most of it's light stuff. I, on the other hand, walking all over the hospital all the time, you know, uh, delivering stuff, and it just, it's really, really, you know, physically demanding. And when I had, like, a leg problem um, and back issues, the first time I was sort of given respect, but, like, the other two times, months later, there was, like, oh, there's no light work for you to do, sorry. But there was, there was, there was things they could have given me, but they were like, no. So, uh, and in the end, I ended, up I ended up leaving. I feel like, um, to conquer stress, obviously exercise is really good, eating healthy, good people. But you have to try and take charge of your own life. And if you're doing something or if you're in a situation you really don't enjoy, you know, I understand some situations you can't get out of, but like work or something, you have to take charge of your own life and possibly try and find something else. Um, so yeah, those are really, uh, I understand like with physical jobs, uh, you can't exercise in your own time, but maybe try and find mental enjoyment, uh, like psychological enjoyments, like, I don't know, gaming, watching films, going out to the pub, going to the clubs, um, or like hanging around with your family or, um, watching things or maybe exercising on the weekends or, I don't know, there aren't, there aren't many really physically demanding jobs that will stop you from doing absolutely any physical exercise, but... Just walking and pushing every cage is all the time walking all over a massive hospital. That sort of thing can. I'm not saying I've had it the worst. There's people who have got it a lot worse. And I was only an apprentice. So I was getting, wasn't really getting paid much neither. But that's besides the point. If you don't like something at all, find a different job. So yeah, that's um, that's my take on depression, anxiety and stress. I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, yeah, you know, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed. I don't think I don't know if many people got this far. But yeah, thanks for watching. Um, so yeah, see ya.